All right, ladies and gentlemen, it is your boy Ryan Thomas from Failtech here, and I'm really pumped. As you can see in this background shot here, there are some things to do with an internet test that, yeah, pretty cool. Anyway, I had to get that out of the way just saying that. I want to tell you about the top five reasons you, yeah, that's right, you who is watching this, should go out and get Cyanogen for your Android device. That's if you're owning an Android device, which you're probably watching this video because you own an Android device. So I'm gonna go straight into this. The first one, performance increase. Now my Nexus 4 does crash quite a lot and that's just because it's an old phone, but the speed, considering where I went from stock lollipop to marshmallow on cyanogen the speed increase has just been absolutely phenomenal everything's smoother it just comes out better everything is just better about it in terms of the speed whether that's animations whether that's loading times everything's just faster about it and I absolutely love it for that. So if you've got an older phone and you want the performance of a brand new device, this is pretty much a way to do it. It's a good way to bring your device back from the dead. Secondly, new OSs. Like I said, I've got Marshmallow on my Nexus 4, which is not possible. You can actually see a video to that in the description. I actually show that off. And it's really, really cool to have Marshmallow on my Nexus 4, considering you're not even meant to have it on your, you know, it's not meant to be on your Nexus 4. They don't bring it out. With Cyanogen brings new OSs to new devices. The same as Lollipop, for the Galaxy Nexus, which shouldn't really be able to run a lollipop, but it does, and that is so cool. So if you want the new OS and you can't do it, Cyanogen's actually a really good way to do that. Next, it, this is really, really cool for me, nightly updates. Now, like I said, I do get quite a few crashes with my device. That's not due to the fact it's Cyanogen. I think it's just due to the fact that it has been beaten around as a phone. The coolest thing is though, because it's got nightly updates, if there is a problem with the software, it has nightly updates, so they're usually fixed every night, if not every other night. Next is customization. Now this is really, really useful and does come in handy quite a lot. You can change your DPI, so you can change how small and big the icons are on the screen. My friend Harry has Cyanogen and he sets his DPI to like tiny so that everything's just really, really small and it does so much screen real estate and you can do that. So I currently have mine on about 280 DPI and you can change that within the system itself. You don't have to exit the OS to do this. Next, you can change the button layout on the front, the button layout on the top, the notification tray, the power options, the notification light even. And this one's the final one. This is the fifth reason. And I've kind of turned this into a five features that I like about it. So the features is in the top five. And then within that, there's a little sub top five, which is cool. The first feature, is the double tap power button to open the photo camera app. This is really cool and it saved me a lot of times. Obviously you can do it from the home screen or the lock screen rather, just swipe in from the left. It doesn't work quite as well because if it's in your pocket, you're bringing it out your pocket whilst double tapping the button at the same time and you've got your camera instantly. Next is the notification bar for brightness. So you can actually swipe or like scroll on the notification bar at the top to change the brightness, which is really cool. N bit gimmicky, not really that useful, but I like it anyway because it means you can change it without going into another menu. I hate menus. You can double tap the notification bar to sleep as well. I'm not sure why you'd need this rather other than if it was your phone was sat on the desk and you wanted to close it quickly without having to kind of use the side obviously because you'd be pushing the device. You just double tap that notification bar at the top and it shuts down or rather goes to sleep. Okay, this is quite cool. It's 180 degree rotation. So whilst in an application, you can rotate your device 180 degrees. So upside down effectively and still get the menu, which is gimmicky, but I really like it. And finally, something that I've kind of already hinted at is the notification light. Now on my device and many Nexus devices, you have an RGB notification light, which you can change for different applications and different settings. But with Cyanogen, you can change it to whatever color in the RGB spectrum you like. That is really, really cool. I, obviously I'd have it on like purple or blue, my favorite colors, but you can change it to whatever color you like. You can change the light to different applications. You can change how fast it goes, how fast it flashes. Like it's the coolest thing ever. I didn't even know you could do that on Cyanogen. And yesterday I was having a little play about and I knew I just found out you could do this. Overall guys, what do I think? Cyanogen is just the best way of reviving an old phone. It brings you new features. It basically maximizes performance. It maximizes the potential of your device. Cyanogen is so useful. And if you guys really want a tutorial on how to install uh, Cyanogen, then please let me know. But I'm, I might not do that till a later date. Like I said in a previous video, it's very difficult to do. So I will leave all the bits in the description and you guys can go and look for yourself. I really, really like this OS and that is why I think you should get it yourself.